So we'll get started. And this is the uh, Northampton Conservation Commission for the 27th of uh, February 2014. I'll read the standard opening statement. Uh, the commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. The duties also include open space, acquisition, and management. Uh, primarily, we focus on carrying out the provisions of the Wetlands Act and the Northampton City Wetlands Ordinance. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. Our meetings, uh, dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are in our purview. Today's agenda includes a request for determination of applicability, uh, uh, location in Audubon Road, uh, request for an extension of generic order of conditions uh, by the Northampton DBW, uh, review of uh, the language in the open space land use uh, regulations, and a proposed amendment, um, and uh, other business not foreseen at the time when the agenda was prepared. Uh, do we have any minute, no minutes to approve this? We do not, no. Uh, is there any general public comment before we start? And uh, first item, uh, request for determination of, of uh, applicability to determine if an addition of the deck is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or the uh, Northampton Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, applicant Edith London, uh, for the uh, Good evening, my name is uh, Bill Cannon. I'm a landscape architect. Uh, I prepared the plan uh, that was submitted along with uh, the notice, uh, the, the request for determination of applicability. Um, I have uh, with me Edith uh, Dundon, uh, the applicant, and also uh, Norm Glenn, the builder, uh, for the project. If uh, we can uh, get uh, an approval from the Conservation Commission for the project, uh, he would be uh, building the project. Um, the plan uh, indicates, as you briefly described, uh, a proposal for an addition to be added to an existing house that's adjacent to a brook, and it's a, run it's a running brook. Um, the addition is a 16 by 16 uh, foot uh, addition uh, on the side of the house. Uh, as you're looking at it from Audubon Road, it would be on the right side. Um, and there is kind of a triangular little connection from the new addition to uh, what would be a, a new opening uh, on the side of the house as well. Um, the addition, uh, because of the nature uh, of the existing house, the, the house is uh, at grade at street level, uh, but uh, right at the front uh, foundation, there's there's a wall and it kind of drops off four feet. So um, there is um, a portion of the of uh, the house that is exposed four feet below the existing uh, finished floor. So this allows us to uh, construct the addition um, at the height of the first floor. Um, and basically uh, would be four feet above grade. So it actually would not be built into the ground. Uh, for what it's worth, um, I mean, you know, maybe there's, there's some consolation there for that ground not being exactly covered uh, by the new addition. Um, we, um, the plan indicates that we can cover that ground area, including underneath the addition with uh, a layer of stone uh, extending out from uh, the uh, building. Um, I think I have dimension only 12 inches or so, which would help with the infiltration of runoff from the roof of this new addition. And also we're suggesting as part of this plan, uh, some enhancement plantings uh, along uh, the brook uh, as part of the project. Uh, we've shown, we've indicated on a plan where we put a filter um, uh, sock uh, for erosion protection to the brook, which would extend from the building, the back of the house corner, to the brook along uh, the brook. And um, 
and uh, kind of dog leg um, to meet an existing uh, wall, uh, I believe, to the west. Uh, the brook is running, as I mentioned. Um, it goes right through the whole village uh, uh, district, um, and it is um, channelized with walls on either side of it. Um, actually, up to the height of the existing grades. Uh, there's no associated wetland uh, with that to speak of uh, on on the property, and uh, um, I think we, we've done we've tried to try to indicate everything we could on there for your review. Uh, if you have any questions, we'd be happy uh, to answer them. Questions from commissioners? Oh yeah. <coughs> Um, you don't show where the drain is just going to go off the roof, um, you know, like an arrow saying in downspout here or something, um, and washed on underneath the addition. How how is that going to um, absorb any water if it's underneath the addition? Granted, the addition isn't right on the ground, but um, no rain is going to get down through there um, unless you can direct the runoff from the uh, downspouts, which aren't shown on here, um, into that area. Uh, also important to that would be whether the ground can even absorb um, the runoff. I have no idea what kind of soils are out there because it isn't indicated on the plan. And I, I would think that would be important. It's nice sandy soils, it's beautiful. You know, the stone would slow everything down and it would sink right into the soils. But I don't know what kind of soils are there. Coarse granular. I understand we've got coarse granular soils. Okay. That there's not an issue with uh, any kind of clays or, or stuff that I don't even have complications <coughs> putting in uh, these diamond pairs that are going to support the uh, columns. That's a sport to support the uh, addition. And okay. regarding the downspouts, it's a simple matter is we're going to turn the elbows reversed yeah. to go into the direction of the stone that's underneath. Well, well. And there'll be two there'll be two downspouts. It's a simple little gable end right. addition. And on the gable end of the addition, both on the front and the back, there'll be a downspout. And the downspout will come down and literally flood right into the stone area. Okay, well, the thing is we don't have a detail on that, and that would have been yeah. kind of important to make that, sure. uh, make a decision by us, uh, because that seems to be a key part of um, some of your mitigation is to infiltrate as much of that rainfall as you can before it heads out to the brook. Um, but, but like I said, it isn't shown on here, so. What's, what's the, uh land right now is that uh, would you like to see a picture of this golf yeah it, it's it's just a typical you know developed lot with grass uh, around the house um there is a patio in the back as it's indicated on the plan um you know some you know your typical landscaping and um some there's a hedgerow uh, along the, the right side of the building too that's indicated so the right to the yeah. yeah, it's mowed right to the, to yes, the stone right. wall. The additions can take off from that. Right, it's going to be right here. Okay. So, it's just so this is kind of a weird site. I went out in the fall. Oh, yeah, um, fine. There's absolutely no leafy dumping in the because the brook has been channelized for so long. It's basically just to see if you're going to that, you know, the soil character. Yeah, I just, I, just a shovel. Yeah, just a With the lower plants. That's the. Yes. Yeah, it's man, yeah, man-made stone walls on both sides of uh, the brook. Probably for a hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the bottom of the brook, the, the base is at, at the brook is about two feet wide, and then the, the uh, walls kind of slightly battered to the height of the top of it. Just So there's there's, uh, there's there's no wetlands. This, no. Is, this is only a question of uh, river flow. And also buffers onto the bank. 
solutions that you can That's sort of it's a dental. It's mostly just river front. Just survey. Right. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah, actually great. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. actually in this the perennial park. Okay. From just to the left is the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's, and it's fairly flat. I mean, it's still oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's actually slopes slightly great. towards the house. If we can get a real close though. Would the commission be interested in okay. checking out a couple of the pictures of the? Oh sure. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I've got one picture here that that kind of shows the side in which the to which the uh, building addition is going to be attached, and it's going to be right bottom. It's going to be kind of right at the line of those bottom windows there. But to my way of thinking, at least if, if that ground underneath it is just, you know, it, it's there, it would allow, it would increase the saturation uh, ability of the soils once the, once the runoff comes off of the roof and hits the ground, rather than just uh, being uh, absorbed away from a foundation typically going into the ground. It could then kind of uh, be absorbed into the ground that goes underneath the addition as well. So the windows are actually going to be under the deck. Yes, yeah. that's correct. And actually, this is a picture. This is a picture of the channelized brook. Just so you can kind of check and see the the type of character of that brook. Sonotubes? I mean, what's We're not sonotubes. There's a product that's called diamond pairs. They're a way of putting in a column that structurally can support the what's necessary for the addition without creating a lot of disturbance in the ground. And it's simply think of a blob of concrete, if you will, where these metal rods go in at various angles that are pounded into the ground. And um, the way they put in the ground, they rely a lot more on friction in resisting both uplift with frost as well as uh, bearing capacity and pushing down. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, it's, it's really a wonderful way to uh, have no impact and going in there with equipment and disturbing the ground and try to uh, make a big So it's uh, it, it put in with, with hand tools then? Uh -huh. Yeah, actually a, a, a hydraulic hammer uh, hammers the, the metal pipes uh, that go through the, the blob of concrete, mm -hmm. lacking a better way of explaining it, uh, and pounds them right into the ground. So similar to bridge pier construction, where yeah. you know, well, exactly. it's on that. Yeah, it's on that. You know, idea. Patterned structures and then pour a cap on top of it. Yeah. But you know how they got the, those helical yeah. uh, type of footings they use out on you know elevated boardwalk boardwalks yeah. on wetlands and that kind of stuff. They, the the theory is that they go in different ways to anchor it into the soil, and that friction keeps it held, holds it up. Yeah. Other questions from commissioners? <coughs> if there, I was going to say I would move the paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would move the protection line up further towards the construction, but you're also doing plantings down. In the yeah, that's why I put the the yeah. the, 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 the uh, sock down by the the edge of the uh, so wall. You, using the type of construction you just developed um, explained, it appears there'll be almost no disturbance, except for a guy standing here with a hydraulic hammer mm -hmm. pounding in. The, 
way you're not bringing it back on. I mean, you're not yeah, bringing up the soil or whatever. Other questions? Danny? Um, you're looking thoughtful. Yeah, I'm just looking at the riverfront. Yeah, that's what it's It, it, it is in riverfront. Because I mean, this is very within the inner area. Yeah, I mean, I, scale wise, in order to show the detail on there, the, the, the inner riparian line is even down, oh, yeah, it's down by Audubon Road. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the nature of the whole area, the whole Leeds uh, village area. Any other questions? Move to close. I'm motion to close. Second. Made and second, you're in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What do you think? My uh, my first response was, um, and I said this to Sarah when she sent the material, was we don't have enough information here to actually know what's being proposed in detail. Um, and unless we determine that this is already a disturbed area and then additional work isn't going to add any disturbance, then we really need an NOI to have that level of detail. But um, and the first question is, uh, how much disturbance is de minimis disturbance? And when does it pass that line? So that this is something that we have to Well, I guess the <coughs> disturbance is not the measure for riverfront. It's degraded by the absence of, soft, of, of topsoil or the ability to absorb any flow. So you can have disturbed areas but disturbed is not what's used in the roadfront regulations. It's the references to um, degraded area. Um, if, you're gonna, if you're going to do something, I mean, if you're going to actually alter, which this would, then you need to either provide an alternative analysis saying that there's no practicable alternative um, economically. I mean, the thing is from the Rivers Protection Act, this is kind of what you're trying to stop because you're already within 35 feet of a of a creek that will overflow, and so you're allowing development that much closer, um, you know, even though it's not approaching closer than the than the existing structures. Um, but it is putting something, you know, something up more of value at risk for flooding. Uh, you're also losing, you know, you're losing also some 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 limited infiltration there, but. Does it uh, matter that one of the things I was wrestling with is because it's not on the ground, uh, that there isn't a, 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 a pouring of a, of a foundation that encroaches on that additional space, does it, does it matter from the Rivers Act standpoint that it's an elevated piece with just a, a couple of posts holding that? I mean, I guess that you could, if it was just on the sonotubes, and I think we've had projects like this before, that if you maintained the grass or you maintained some kind of ivy or some kind of vegetation underneath, that then you could say that you weren't altering that. You, know, you would only be altering to the, the size of the sonotubes. And again, I think with the project that we had previously, um, they had some concrete, you know, they had some concrete pad, or they some, had something in the riverfront area there was that was large enough that they, that, they could, that, that they could pull that out and basically put it in square foot for right. square foot. Right. So the issue here is, you know, you, you, you are altering the riverfront, and so that <coughs> you're altering the riverfront, you need to meet the tests. Um, which is gonna kick it down to F and G, which is mitigation or restoration. Right. <coughs> Well, I guess you can only get to F and G if you have degraded, right? If you're degraded already. Yeah. Otherwise, it's the alternatives analysis. Yeah. I mean, if it's not if it's not degraded, if it actually still functions hydrologically, then you need to do alternatives analysis and say this is the only economic way. And the, and the hard thing about that is that usually under you know DEP says if you build a house, you build a house. 
right? You, that's if you can build a if it's a residential zone for one house, and you can build one house, then that's economically practical. You know, you know, if you'd like to build a fifteen thousand square foot house and only two thousand will fit, we're not going to say that's you know, yes, you lose some value, but that's not <coughs> that's not meeting the test of economic practicability. Um, So I mean, for you know, for instance, you know, for instance, um, if, if you wanted to be creative about this, if, if you took the square foot, you know, if you could, if this is going to be four to six feet above, and you can maintain some kind of vegetation, so you know, again, just trying to stay within the regulations here, um, and you can have some kind of vegetation existing there that's equipped to the lawn, and you can trade the brick, you know, the square footage from the brick paper patio, and you vegetate that. Then you've got a riverfront that is, I think, not no, it's not altered. Right. Right. You've got the same amount of vegetation. You've got the same. Again, the downspouts are directed underneath the addition. Um, you've got the same sort of hydrologic conditions. Obviously, the downspouts are going to be focusing. Or direct. They could just drop the downspouts into a uh, dry well. Or yeah. Or a dry well underneath. But you know that to me seems the. Maintaining, you know, your adherence to the regulations is the best way to do it. But that that's consistent with my first impression is that we need to see more detail um, as per an NOI. I think it'd be really or, hard. Or we could specify conditions. Um, yeah, it just seems hard. But then to we're check designing the box. We're designing. Yeah. The box. yeah. Discussion. I know it's you close the hearing yeah, part of it. If the hearing is closed, if there's questions somebody wants to ask, um, and we're, we're just uh, constrained by the. Um, Since it's an RDA, it's not a technical hearing, so that would be okay. Okay. Right. For an NOI, we couldn't do that. Yeah. Sir. Um, in light of the discussion uh, that's going on here, um, um, it was really it's really kind of hard to, to kind of uh, allow for uh, vegetation uh, to exist underneath the uh, addition. Uh, you know, for obvious reasons, it wouldn't grow and everything else. So that's why we kind of. I, I think we, we try to compensate for that by the planting enhancements along the along the brook, uh, rather than just having it um, a lawn area. Uh, we're suggesting that that planting area uh, uh, would perform a little bit differently than just a, a, a hard surfaced uh, lawn area uh, with some infiltration. Uh, having said that. Um, there may, there, there's a possibility here that we could delete the patio that's in the back yeah, to, to, that. uh, to offset uh, or to mitigate the, the presence uh, of, the, of the raised building. Um, and we just, you know, we'll take the bricks out and uh, add in uh, topsoil and uh, loam it for a lawn area. Um, that's certainly a possibility. There would be a walkway that we would just kind of retain that kind of comes down the steps, and wraps around to the entrance to the basement. Mm -hmm. right. But the, the the bulk of that patio could be eliminated eliminated in lieu of, of, of uh, the new addition, uh, or to mitigate the, the presence of the new addition. I'm just like we're constrained by what the regulations allow us to do, and in Massachusetts, if you're as you know, if you're within 100 feet of a river. If, if there's topsoil, if it can absorb water, then it's very difficult to build something new. And if you okay. build something new, you basically have to show there's no, you have to do an alternatives analysis and say, there's no way that we can do this, and here's where you run the problem. There's no way we can do this addition, but actually they say, well, but you already have a house. So the house is there, you don't necessarily get to add it to the top. However, there is okay. an exception, which is, if you've already got impervious areas on your, you know, they're not functioning, 
for instance, like that. Break, so we just heard you about that. Yeah. yeah. You can do basically a one for one swap. As long as you, you take out something where the rain can't get through, you can shuffle it over to a different place in the lot. So, you know, it, it looks, just looking on the plan, they look you know, not quite equivalent, but if you took out the brick papers and you know, easily place them in something that was pervious, um, and then if you were short, right, if you were short by a little bit, you could leave part of the area that was right closest underneath with some vegetation. I mean, I understand you're not going to get it in row 12 feet back on the but, mm -hmm. but basically a combination of having some vegetation boundary around the drip line there and then taking out the brick paper probably gets you to that one to one. Um, and that, you know, that allows us to say this is okay underneath the direction. I have a question. I Procedurally, you need a notice of intent uh, only because to show those, that mitigation plan. Or does it is it because it, if the plan already shows the possibility, do can we take it as is? I think it would be up to the discretion of the commission, since you're you're being asked to determine that this work doesn't have an impact on the river. So if everything before you leads you to believe that it doesn't, okay. then the determination would be acceptable in this case. But if more information is needed and permanent lasting conditions well, are, it, it, well, we have to establish as a condition. Um, that in fact the removal, the establishment of a roughly one for one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that would. Yeah. You'd have to. So it would just be worded that prior to beginning work on the project, the brick papers would have to be removed. Yeah, the plan yeah, can be amended. We 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 can we can. Uh, I, I can amend the plan. I can come in and see Sarah about it and make sure that you know we're. We're kind of we're we're on the right path of a uh, uh, one to one replacement. Um, it's possible to delay the decision. Well, we right we could delay and just have to come back with an amended plan. Um, we could get fairly specific in our conditions. That, um, right. Uh, I think. In our if we're going to be specific with our conditions, we want to have a reference yeah, to something. A proof of reference. Um, is it? Yeah, I mean, just to, you know, just to what you're trying to satisfy is at a minimum, proposed work shall re result in an improvement over existing conditions and the capacity of the riverfront area to protect river, uh, interests identified in Mass General Law, um, Chapter 131, Section 40. So that's what we would look at for that is the planting plan. Okay, so you say this is going to function. Um, better ecologically. Um, river not located closer to the river, and it looks like your enclosed porch here satisfies that, that the approach to the rivers, so you're, you're, that test is fine. Um, and then the area of proposed work shall not exceed the amount of degraded area. So your degraded area basically is, if you look at your, since you're completely within the riverfront, every piece of impervious surface on your lot is sort of eligible to trade. As long as you don't get, don't get closer to the river, if you know if you shave a foot off your driveway and take that square footage, you get to put that in the bank in, yeah. terms, of, in terms of what's permissible for this pad. Mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's the test. So I know whether we want to do that as a you know, condition that and have it to plan yeah, for us. If it's know, not a hardship, I don't know when you're planning on, on, on the work, but if it's not a hardship to come back the next year and get those modifications. So that'll give you a chance to go out and measure all of those <coughs> things you might want to trade. Um, and then also specify that the, uh, uh, the, the stone area. Uh, yeah, what is that? Is that like crushed stone or? Just um, a washed stone. Uh, so it would be clean stone that would be just let, uh, uh, laid down in a layer. Uh, four inch, six inch layer. No, next to the brick paver, it says stone. Oh. That's the Is that flat stone steps? Or oh. Something? Oh, yeah, that. Oh, by the pavers? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, under the um, enclosed porch. Yeah, that's actually washed down. It's a little, it's a little yeah, it's all loose. Oh. It's all loose. It's loose washed down. Yeah, they. Washed down. It, it's just basically that sort of loose stone. Uh, in that void there uh, that's surrounded by the, the brick patio. 
I think the stone and one one. One. the brick paver uh, removal is around 207 square feet. Rest I didn't add in the stone, but the stone I think will come up pretty close to the 316. Just guessing. Um, I might be able to do the, it right there. And if, as Danny suggested, you have uh, uh, still uh, foliage, ground cover, and the lawn in uh, for the first 18, 24 inches around the perimeter of the, uh, the deck, uh, you can probably get to your own know, actual need to, to have as a. Uh, the columns actually come in two feet, so on the gable end, it'd be very, very easy for, especially that two feet, so mm -hmm. two times 16. Yeah. Right at the top of my head. I'll yeah. see, but that's about the only width the sunlight would get in there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, but this is, it's, it's it's the, the house end is, is south facing, so mm -hmm. toward the road, so you have to get a fair amount in there. Is that a hardship to come back at the next meeting with no. those modifications? If so, then probably best to continue. And we'll just get an amended plan. And then we have to continue our discussion. Do we continue? Second. Um, All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so uh, that'll be March 13th at 5 o'clock. March 13th. Uh, um, I will not be. Okay. <laughs> That means everybody else has to do it. Who's the I can add that if you want. Could you repeat the date and the time? March 13th. At? 5 o'clock. And that's Thursday or Thursday too? Yes. Two weeks. Um, I mean, uh, would you prefer that I bring enough copies for everybody to have their own copy, uh, or? Well, if you can send it to, you know, the, I don't know what you want to have for records, but to, if you can send it to Sarah in advance and have it be projectable, that's sure. probably awesome. Well, so just one full-size copy and the PDF. Yeah, if we send you the PDF, then you can kind of send that out yeah. if you want. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not, you know, I can't get this part off. <laughs> yeah. not, not so easy to tell what you Okay. And if I have any other questions, uh, I'd be happy to, to see if I can come in and see Sarah about you know, some of those details since you're part of the discussion here. And I just want to make sure I get it right here. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, next item, no time stamp, so we can just go ahead and request for extension of generic order conditions for maintenance activities in DPW. Um, Sarah sent that out. I did not print my copy. So basically, the rundown it. on that is that the generic order of conditions for DPW maintenance work is expiring, and they're working on completing a full new NOI, but in the meantime, they just want this extended to make sure that they can continue to do all that important work. And so this is just an extension um, of the existing yes. order. Yes, and they, it can go up to three years, but they're working on filing for the March meeting, so they just want one year. March meeting next month? Yes. So they it's coming to you? It's expiring next week. So right. the timing. So, yeah. so, but we you can't do it for six months. We, we could. We could do six months. That would be fine. Okay. Um, discussion. I just have a question. Do they track? Um, do they track and report to planning and sustainability when they operate under the generic order? I mean, it do you depends know? on what it is that they're doing. Some things I, they're required to notify us. Right. Some things they can just do. Okay. When was that last one issue? I know you said in your... Um, seven years ago, I guess? It's, it's already been extended. I don't, I don't recall it. So no, it was extended through the permit extension. Uh, they were extended a couple times because the state extended right. everything right off. Okay. 
So, um, motion to approve extension of the existing order of conditions for future. And we are extending for six months. Is that that? I'd say six. Why well, okay. go for a year when we expect to have it before us in the next two months? Okay. So move for the period of six I'll months. Second. Maybe second it. To any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Um, and then. Sarah proposed, which I did not print anything to this year. Um, I thought the language <coughs> sounded fine, but I wanted, you know, I, I did not pick it up. section by section or vote on the whole thing? Because uh, we're reviewing or we're modifying, Sarah's proposed modifying more than just the uh, hunting. Uh, yeah, section. a few years ago we discussed the changes in blue, but they were never voted on, and then the changes in red are the result of the vote at the last meeting. So were the changes in blue already voted on before? No. Do you want to take these one at a time or what? Yeah, let's just sure. go better. Do you need There's much? only 12 items. Yeah. Do you these ones first? So the, the, uh, in the intro, uh, there's the removal of non-disruptive passive. Um, so that the new language of the conservation lands are, for the, are open for the use of the general public for recreational and conservation purposes only. Fishing is allowed on conservation properties subject to state law. So it removes non-disruptive passive which I guess is not a technically meaningful phrase. It sounds like a grammar term. <laughs> 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 Never used the non-destructive passive. <laughs> that's just sort of a cleanup item. All right, that's a cleanup item. No problem with that, I assume. No. Um, next, uh, item one, uh, removal of wood, so it's any fires, uh, are prohibited. This was the result of a broad coalition concern because I guess they had people hiking into Fitzgerald Lake with little drills and making fires and that was rather concerning to them. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. So this removes that uh, charcoal and portable drills and portable gas or butane stoves may be used. So now it just says blanket, fires are prohibited. Any problem with that? No, but the only thing I'm assuming though is if there's wilderness camp camping that is permitted, are they allowed to have cook while they're camping? That's a good point. <laughs> and they're not to cook. <clears throat> well, if we say fires are prohibited and then they're silent about um, uh, gas and butane, we, since they got to have commission permission to camp, they get permission at that point for. We figure out permission at that point for okay. stoves. Right. I'm not so worried about just um, butane is a pretty yeah. benign way to eat some. So, yeah. but if we say sign of that, then I think that gives us the flexibility. Well, yeah. We want to put. Does, it, how often have people actually asked permission to camp? Yeah. Once a year on Elwha Island. One only on the yes, that's not, it's the only one we've ever had. Uh -huh. I, people do it, I'm sure, they just don't ask permission. Right, right. No, a lot of people used to camp on Elba. Right. Some people live on Elba. Yeah. <laughs> it's not in our purview. <laughs> we could change the first one to read, fires are prohibited, 
except portable gas or butane. Butane stoves may be used with the written permission of the commission. Rather than, you know, because otherwise we're granting, we're granting permission to something that's, we're basically altering our regulations. We're, we're occasionally granting Rosa, permissions. Right, that, and no, that nobody knows about. It. Yeah. And there are people will be, wait a second, it says no fires, why are you guys here with fires? Yeah, and, and then people wait can say there's exceptions, like right. somebody wants day use versus wilderness camping use. I mean, if we just, if we just leave that except with written permission, then when that makes sense. somebody wants to do it, they can apply for use. Yes. So, can I answer the question, like wilderness camping versus camping? Like wilderness camping sounds like you shouldn't be carrying a butane grill with you if you're wilderness camping. Well, it's just like you, you can have a little portable. No, no, I know, but I just the difference between camping and wilderness camping. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to. Oh no, you can't use your RV. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's the distinction. Oh, okay, no, that's no the car. distinction. That's what I want no, to RV. understand. You can't drive the RV down the down the access gotcha. road from so the So more like tent camping is really what we're saying. Right? Yes. So I remember Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, if you were looking at wilderness, you needed it. <laughs> Do we even have continental piece of land that qualifies as that? Okay, so, so, so the first one, fires are prohibited, except, except with written permission. Except portable gas or butane stoves may be used with the written permission of the commission. Okay. And Camping stays as is, rubbish disposal, carry and carry out stays as is, and hunting trapping. Uh, the new language would be hunting, trapping, and carrying firearms or other weapons is prohibited on all conservation lands subject to the following exceptions. And then should that be uh, uh, four sub A or uh, uh, just having a dash there doesn't seem quite good. There was a, I deleted a space, actually, that's on the <coughs> so, we to so we could do A, B, C. So the hunting but not trapping is allowed in the Abusa section of Fitzgerald Bay Conservation Area, at least 300 feet away from all maintained and raised foot trails. B, hunting is allowed at the Rainbow Beach Wildlife Management Area, subject to regulation number 12, which is an extensive one which we are not modifying, but has been in the land use regulations for uh, 10, 15 years. So these were just never updated to include the hunting facility. So and this is just a clean answer. C is the new language. Archery hunting of deer and wild turkey is allowed at the Beaverbrook slash Brownbrook conservation area in accordance with all applicable state laws and regulations. Hunters are encouraged to contact the commission with hunting results. I think it's fine. Fine as is. Any modifications? I think. We don't want any. We already have the vote. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that vote is, is behind us. This is just to adopt a specific language. Um, the only thing when I was reading this is um, I didn't know whether it would make sense to add contact the commission before hunting and with. Just because if someone, because to me it's important that, again, if we know there are, right, there are lots of hunting <laughs> attempts, for instance, going out to get oh, turkey, yeah, no, right. we're unsuccessful. That are unsuccessful, right. But if you only, oh, as a way to gauge, way to gauge how much use, I think that's good. That, yeah, actually, you know, that can be. What is that basically, like keep a log or something? Yeah, like they, well, basically, well, people could, if people could even, they don't even have to call in before, but if they, if the commission has a sense, of there are 520 hunter days mm -hmm. in that on the property mm -hmm. with no incidents, with no complaints, right. with no one even noticing, then that gives us a sense of well, at that level of hunting effort, right? There's been no effect mm -hmm. on, on public use, which I think. I was going to remind the tent anyway. Just keep a daily log of it, right? When I go in there, and if I'm successful, how many hours I got to do this, you know that type of right, thing. Right, right. I mean, obviously, you're going to be up there cruising the. Right, area before you want, but it's right. just, but again, I think in terms of allaying concerns over hunting, changing the character of the property, just mm -hmm. the better, the better information we have, mm -hmm. 
the better case that would you want to know like who we see out there like the uh, no not, or? not necessarily I think basically just you know I went up and hunted this today yeah. I went up you know Tuesday the 14th and just you could send an email or call Sarah and just say four of us hunted today and obviously it's not mandatory it's just right. to encourage it because and if the word is passed then if people get in the habit of just calling in then we know and then potentially can expand it to other areas if they seem you want it to be an ongoing thing or just a log at the end of the season? It can, be, I, it can be either. It can be either one. I think either it, one. the way we would probably phrase it is to notify the commission of uh, your efforts and results. And so, yeah. you know, if it's all in one sheet of paper at the end of the season, that's fine. It's just so we have some kind of... Change your life sentence. So, yeah, just how about, about hunters must activity. contact the commission rather than... Well, we have no way of enforcing it, though. Huh? They have no way of enforcing saying that they must. Well, you have no way of enforcing what you're suggesting now. But that's not the point. The point is just to get a feel for how hunting is going, whether it's successful in terms of there's no conflicts and no safety issues. And it's uh, it, in, I think the hunting community's interest to uh, let us know, that, let the community know that it's getting used. Well, maybe you could put strong on the encourage game. <laughs> we can put strong in the encourage. I don't well, know. I, it, I think we're, 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 we're not going to issue permits. Right. Know, it's, it's not that kind of a process. I so think it's overstepping a boundary. That's like, you know, because snowmobilers are out there and they don't have to call in. And, you know, they can be kids running around the forest being destructive and they don't have to call in. I think that's just overstepping a boundary. I think they should just say encouraged. It's good for me. So I was just, hunters are encouraged to contact the commission about hunting activity and game taken. Good. So we got a well, sense of not all fall under hunting results. What's that? Um, well, the results it. makes it sound like something. I got a deer. Ha something's happened. I got a deer. Right? It would be like checking in at the getting your tag, but this is this is not. You don't check in if you don't find anything. If you don't, right? if you go up hunting turkey and you're successful archery hunting one in ten times, then it makes it look like there's been one tenth of the activity. <laughs> That's why I say just let us know that you're hunting. Yeah, I think activity and results are needed. But game taking as opposed to results? Well, results uh, doesn't matter. So we can need results. <laughs> Harvest information thing? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, I mean, obviously, what would you say? Yeah. Harvest. Harvest. Yeah, because it's, right, it's, it's directed at hunters, so. Pick the right mushrooms. All right. All right. Um, Number five, collecting, cutting, and planning is prohibited except with written permission of the commission. Collection of edible berries <laughs> <laughs> and mushrooms for personal consumption is allowed. Well, now, <laughs> who was it that thought we needed to add edible? Well, I because think this came up because people could say, well, I'm making a wreath, or I'm, uh, you actually have to eat it, and it should be edible. So you can't <laughs> cut the bittersweet? Vines. <laughs> <laughs> because I see people doing it on the side of the road, cutting the attractive red berries. So you can't cut the bitch vines and then drag them along the path <laughs> back to your car. It could be pokeweed, which is not really edible, but if you chew on the seeds, it's supposedly an arthritis cure. So really? Mm -hmm. Not weed, then? Pokeweed. Not weed's edible, yeah. They can collect all they want of that. I was going to say they can come to my bed, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> Six, no change. Seven, motorized vehicles are strictly prohibited <coughs> except uh, A, in conservation area parking lots, and B, snowmobiles are permitted in Roberts Hill and Beaver Brook Broad Brook conservation areas and on the former Turkey Hill Road in Mineral Hills, subject to the following. This is under the snowmobiles part. Only on trails specifically marked for the use. Only when the trails are frozen and covered with four inches of snow. Um, the commission assumes no liability for personal injury or damage to personal property. 
that should that's out of sequence. If, it, if it's going to be also allowed in the GP to price all the Sylvester Road. No, that, that's not snow wheels. That's not snow wheels. That's not yeah. right here. So those, uh, the trails and trails are frozen and no liability. All the snow wheels. <coughs> now, do we want, though, to assume no liability for personal injury or damage to personal property? Also, um, on the GP to All of the above. Yeah. Right. For all of them. Okay. Yeah. We could actually strike that anyway. I, I think that was intended just to make it clear, but we don't have any liability anyway. Okay. So the, for the Turkey Hill Road is in red. Is that for pink or whatever it is? is that? that is a new addition. Did we talk about that and I've zoned it out? Uh, no. Okay. So that, this that's is just because that's a fairly new acquisition. Yeah. So these are all intended no. to just reflect actual practice. And that parcel hadn't been purchased. or. It wasn't a former Turkey Hill Road. The last time this thing was being discussed. Still seems to me that this needs to be uh, restructured. We could change, uh, we could move in the GP to parcel we to B to make it less confusing. And then C, B, and yes, C. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah. All right. So I'm sorry, so the Jeep Eater parcel on Sylvester Road, so it's is it just snowmobiles? That's Jeep. No, that's Jeep. That's Jeep. So it should so it should be So that's gonna come in as B. So the vehicles are allowed in conservationary parking lots and in the Jeep Eater parcel. Okay, so it just sort of clarifies that it's snowmobiles and, and then it's the snowmobile part is the okay. end. So that means not on Salmon Hills, which you wouldn't know based on the tracks I found this morning. <laughs> They're, they're not allowed, but they're definitely allowed. Give them a ticket. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I have advocated in the past that we should have hats or badges on jackets or something. Jumpsuits. <laughs> we actually did have <coughs> cards. Preservation collection cards? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, I still have mine. <laughs> um, Boiled, I think. <laughs> eight, eight is fine, nine is fine, ten is fine, eleven. Dogs must remain on leashes at all times. And that's actually a city ordinance, so this is just repeating it. No, it doesn't hurt to have it in there, but I who have sometimes not always had my dog. Do you want them to collect their waste? You okay? Yeah. Oh, this is it. Nineteen eighty nine. My your uh your beard was not great. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you kept it in good condition. Are there any regs yeah, saying that people brought us in uh, for a yellow screen or something? A photograph. Well so that's the same guy who <coughs> photographs for the police department. <laughs> Are there any regs for people having to clean up after their dogs? Because that has become more of a problem. You, is, that, is that not part of I thought pick up and remove or whatever, the pick up and dispose. It's on the It's on all the signs. signs. Is it a city ordinance? Mm -hmm. Is it on the new signs? No, that, yes, they have to be on the leash, but that they have to clean up after their dogs? Because that's I so. Been, uh, I don't know that it well, is. Usually, I have to look at the new sign in my bag. Usually, yeah. The, uh, on the kiosks, yeah. they have bags. They have bags. Right. Well, there are, I mean, there aren't, again, uh, I, I'm, only I'm, I'm just joking. Joking. I was going to say, uh, they're not. That's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. Right. I'm just sort of wondering, I mean, if that's so something that should be. So it's not a city ordinance, and do people have to clean up after their dogs, even like on a sidewalk? Uh, I don't think it's addressed, actually. Well, we got to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> so people are encouraged to bring um, Rainbow Beach. No proposed changes. And this is the, the, all of the, this. Is a, this sort of jumps out as there's a, a lot of specificity and detail in this one little tiny area. So, and all of that comes from fish and wildlife. 
so these are not our regulations. This is basically just this was basically a trade off. The Division of Fishery, Fisheries and Wildlife agreed to do some active maintenance, which I don't, I don't think they even do anymore, in exchange for us applying these regulations. And this is this, this is only accessible by boat anymore, right? The, Currently, yes. the, even apart from the farmer debate about going through their land, because I think that particular road is actually under the water. All right. Okay. Motion to approve. Do, do we do we just get to do this, or does yes. this have to go to council? So this well? this will be in effect immediately. That's just the time during this meeting. Written and agreed upon during this Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would say aye except for hunting. I don't know anything else to put it. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank so. Kind of anticlimactic after a little bit. I just want to see it through to the end. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, did we receive any comments? Thanks for coming in to see it through to the end. Okay. We usually time. toil at anonymity. <laughs> Sorry for your troubles. <laughs> now <Nine, nine, nine, laughs> no, we were saying, and, and uh, uh, Steve, uh, before he left, he's not here because he's. Uh, Third grandchild was getting born, but uh, and he was saying, "Look, uh, this actually the extra meetings and the public being all that emphatic and all that stuff is actually an interesting process, and we all learn stuff." So, uh, we're grateful for those of you who helped make it happen. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't have gotten brought up. So, thanks. It's good to get a pulse of the city. We do a lot of our work in isolation, and it's so. right. I certainly got that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my only question is what would what would what would be involved in get somebody getting it changed back? I mean, when we, when we say a new commission came in and everyone was dead set against hunting and right. somebody brought it up to change it. I mean same process. <laughs> well, same this process and, and really your only leverage is in terms of the the mayor has the appointment power of the commission. Mm -hmm. Well, if somebody came in, say, next year and say, I'm used to ban hunting in all conservation areas, what would We would say that we've already had that discussion this year, mm -hmm. and, and extensively, including hundreds of people at public hearings, and uh, it's not appropriate to reopen something that's just been so thoroughly decided. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, give it a three to five year window if there's a number of incidences that cause concern, then it might be readdressed, but. I can't foresee it being readdressed for any other reason. And, and part of the research we did was uh, we called around to other communities that have allowed mm -hmm. uh, hunting. And you know, I talked to people in Amherst where they have four conservation areas and they allow hunting uh, unrestrained except by state law. So just firearm hunting as well as bow hunting. And they've had the, the, the only complaint they've had um, is once every couple of years somebody will complain about uh, gunshot noises and what right. was that? Uh, but there's never been any other complaint that they've received. So, you know, I, I don't think it's likely that there's going to be uh, an uproar about what we've done here. Yeah, especially with our tree. Yeah. Especially with our tree. It's going to be hard to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also the other end of it that when you do get a deer, you got to bring it back to the road and put it in your car. Yeah, you know I mean? so, people don't like seeing that, but you know, it's kids around. waiting for a bus and they drive the deer out, and you know, it's that, that type of thing. You know I mean? But so we see people driving around town with that, right. so it's not like it's, it's a just strange a sight. You see the roadkill. Yeah, yeah that better. Two, that this place, two got hit there last week. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't in, 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 in Hampshire, there's roadkill. Someone's on it like that. Oh, yeah. It's a racing here. It's a little different here. Yeah. So, Sarah, do we have. Uh, mail or staff issue permits? Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Uh, nice lot. I did look up dog species, though. Oh. No person who owns, possesses, or controls a dog shall appear with such dog on any sidewalk, street, or other public area without the means of removal of any feces left by such dog. Mm. 
It's the means downtown. of removal. Is that downtown other, or is that other public, well, it's other public area? Any public area. So I would imagine parks are included. It shall be the duty of each person who owns, possesses, or no controls a dog to remove and dispose of any feces left by his or her dog at any so sidewalk, street, or other public take area. Take care of the duty. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed down there by the Mill River, there are people who pick it up and have it wrapped and then tie it and then leave it. I, I, <laughs> That's much I, worse. I, it's, it's much worse. Yeah, they don't even know they have it. going to go in it, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes I'll see the plastic bags and just, <laughs> did you have an accident? You fall, <laughs> you transport it away. <laughs> you just yeah, yeah. They don't want to carry it with them when they walk and they think they're going to get it on their way out, but they don't. Probably. Mm. We should so should we add that to the section well we just voted on it. Well we could um. Well and the reason I brought it up is there's this woman who has snowshoes. My property uh, borders the Summit Hills and she is on the warpath because she went snowshoeing, I guess, and managed to step in. Oh that's really gross. <laughs> yeah, she was not oh. happy. And it's been more of a problem of late. I mean in the summer I think, you know, you can just sort of take a stick and throw it off into the brush and nobody's the wiser, but for whatever reason lately, um, there's been a fair bit of piles left in this one. Oh, the winter's terrible because it all concentrates along the trails and everyone thinks they just kick some snow over and keep going. <laughs> so, right. and, and then, then it the sort of like when freezes. The comes, when the thaw comes, it's just... Yeah, well, it freezes, you can't move it. Well, no, and I, what I've actually done a couple of times because it was getting bad is I've gone out there with a shovel, like a metal shovel, and sort of tried to free it up from the snow and then like sort of launch it, yeah, launch it into the, the bushes or whatever. Well, if it's a city ordinance already, then it is subject to a fine if someone gets caught. The only difference is we can enforce these regulations. Okay. So we can confront the dog owner and say, <laughs> Do we want that level? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have to add it. But you have to, otherwise, it's otherwise you need a police officer to. Yeah. You well, have to so vote an amendment and add it to section 11. Right. It would be. Yeah. That's hard. That's a hard thing to enforce. Hmm? No, it is hard. Yeah. But but it's interesting that, that the bags aren't only at I don't know if they're on Mineral Hills, but well, they're only at Fitzgerald Lake. I mean, so again, I'm not a big fan of the bags. Actually. The the reason for that is that there's no trash cans at most of the other places, and no oh, one right. no one to stock the bags or empty the trash cans if they were there. Hmm. Yeah, there's actually neighbors in the uh, dog in the middle of the area <laughs> who, out of their own good will, put trash cans at each end, one at Federal Street and the other mm -hmm. at the end of Washington yeah. Ave, and put bags up. And yeah. The fact that some people will then take the bags and not put them in the trash cans. So like when they hang them on trees. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. Can we add it in or not? Do we want to? Remove and dispose? Well, we it's already a, uh, a, a, an ordinance, um, shall we say, consistent with city yeah. uh, ordinance? Yeah, and that's a good dog energy responsible. I mean, the most effective thing is would be to add it to the signs, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. remove all your... But shall we add it just to this, to, to, to this, um, whatever that... Mm -hmm. Well, if you're just saying compliance with city ordinance. Yeah, it's compliance with city ordinance. Well, the only thing is the ordinance is public 11. places. This is mm -hmm. public, public places. Yes, uh, so I don't, know, I don't know if a, conserva a trail through a conservation area is not considered a public place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so sidewalk, street, street, or other public areas? Yeah, that's street, sidewalks, and other public areas. I mean, no, no, it's not like that. This is just meant this is to a apply to. Oh, yeah. well, I don't care how we add it. If you want to just add that. Specific language. I mean, dog must, the dogs must remain on these stalls, and I understand dog waste must be removed. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, without yeah, reference no, to the this, this works yeah. all by itself. So, 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 so. Oh, and the ordinance also goes on to say disposal shall be accomplished by transporting such feces to a place suitable and regularly reserved for the disposal of any It's easier sometimes. Mm -hmm. to oh. Just use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get. <laughs> so we have to pass down our toilet in other words. Well, that's because they don't want yeah, you to throw it in the garbage. Mainly because they don't want dog waste going into the landfill because it's fun. <laughs> it's not as because it's sanitary. The landfill is sanitary because it doesn't have human or other waste going into it. So. That's the so they, No, no, they don't. I mean, they don't want you. That's they want you to flush it. They want you to. Right. They don't want you to throw in the garbage. 
answer the yeah. phone call. <laughs> this one I get a little bit certain. I don't see that one being important. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> sadly, sadly, sadly the, the nitrogen loading from the dog waste is what it's uh, really looking for. It produces many pounds in some urban, or close to as many pounds of waste in some urban areas as human beings. And it usually goes right into the bank of the Potomac River. It's terrible. It oh, right. right. It flushed, every rain of that flushed away the river. The, the, the Globe once reported the number of tons uh, of dog waste uh, mm -hmm. produced on Beacon Hill and, and Boston Common yeah. um, per year. And it was flabbergasted. Um, so shall we add the, uh, the dogs remain on leash and waste, the dog waste removed by owner. By owner. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a mild reminder, right? We can't include it. No, yeah. That's good to have there. It's good to have it there. If we have it in here, then it'll end up on, on, on the signs. All right. Yeah, what down, else? Downey and the big dairy farms, they're actually required to set up a system so that all that common work is ahead to the rivers. I had my yeah. students read about a waste lagoon that let go in North Carolina, and I think it was a two foot high wave of pavement of pig manure oh, pig especially is came rolling down the hills <laughs> down the main street they all they're all like oh, oh. <laughs> they thought it was really cool but <laughs> 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 <laughs>